Cloris Leachman, John Shepard, George Chandler, and John Provost as Timmy. And, of course, Lassie. I, Timothy Martin, promise to do my best, to do my duty, to God and my country. Do tell me, to God and my country, to be square and obey the law of the past. That's fine. I hope I remember it tonight. Well, don't you worry. I'll help you until you know it perfectly. But what if I forget? Everybody will be watching. The Cub Scout Pack and the Cub Master. Oh, you won't forget. Besides, Scott will be saying it at the same time, so that'll help. What if he forgets it, too? Oh, he won't forget, and neither will you. Well, where is he? Why doesn't he get here? Well, we probably had some chores to do. I'll bet he's on his way right now. I wish you could come tonight, girl. Lassie will be waiting for you right outside, Timmy. That is the same as having her inside so she can watch. Timmy, we've been over that. I just don't like to do anything without Lassie. Well, she can't join the Cub Scouts. They won't even let her come to one of the meetings. Timmy, if you were allowed to bring Lassie, then all the boys would want to bring their dogs. Can you imagine what the meetings would be like if that happened? But Lassie's different. Yes, she is. At least we think so. But a rule is for everyone, Timmy. You know that. I just hope Lassie understands. Well, she's your friend and she trusts you. Don't you, girl? All right, let's do it once more. There's Scott. Why are you so lucky? I had to stay home because we got company. These are my cousins from Chicago. Ralph and Bud. This is my best friend. His name is Timmy. Hi. Huh? Ow! You keep her away from us. She won't hurt you. She's protecting Timmy. I'm not afraid of her. I don't like dogs, that's all. My brother's not afraid of anything. You join in the scouts, too? Uh-huh. Big deal. We could have joined if we wanted to. Huh, Ralph? Who wants to? It's for babies. It is not. You have to be eight before you can join. You know how old I am. Tell him, Bert. I'm 10 and he's 12. So what do we want with that kid stuff? It isn't kid stuff. You get to learn a lot of important things. Like, um, building things and taking care of cows, horses, dogs, and not get lost in the woods. We ought to join. Huh, Ralph? Then we could take care of all the cows and horses. We got back in our apartment in Chicago. <laughs> They have millions of Boy Scouts in Chicago, and they learn how to build. Build a fire? It's real hard. First, you have to get some matches, and some paper, and then you strike the match. And you know what else they teach you? How not to get lost in the woods on State Street. <laughs> Come on, Bert, let's go chase butterflies. Why not? I can't practice, I promise. My mom said I have to entertain them. Okay. But you ought to teach them about the Boy Scouts while you're doing it. Friends, we welcome you to our ceremony. As you know, Cub Scouting includes the whole family. We hope as parents that you will assist the boys in every way you can when called upon in various leadership capacities. We will light five candles. Two are blue, two are gold, and the one in the center is white. In front of these colored candles are the letters C-U-B-S. These four letters spell Cubs. But each letter in itself stands for something special. All right, boys. The C stands for courtesy. A Cub Scout is courteous. He is courteous to old people, his friends, his teachers, and especially to his parents. He is courteous in all that he says and does. The U stands for unity. 
joint too. When a boy joins a pack, his parents join too. He does not. U stands for unity. When a boy joins a pack, his parents join too. He does not work alone, but with other boys. He learns to get along with others. For bravery. The Cub Scout is courageous enough to stand up for the things that he thinks are right. Honesty, equality, and fair play, thereby making the world a better place in which to live. The S stands for service. A boy not only does service for himself while he is a Cub Scout, but he also serves others. He strives to help spread goodwill in every way he can. The great white candle in the center stands for the spirit of scouting. Come in, Scott. You've come here tonight seeking admission into the fun and friendship of Cub Scouting. You've learned, together with your parents, who are here with you, the things necessary to become a bobcat. Will you give me the Cub Scout sign and repeat the Cub Scout promise? I, Scott Richards, promise to do my best, to do my duty, to guard my country, to be square and obey the law of the pack. Will the parents of these candidates please step forward and stand beside your sons? Will you pin the Bobcat badge on your son, making him an official Cub Scout? Congratulations, Scout. Thanks, Uncle Peachy. Mighty proud of you, boy. There's nothing so satisfying to a man as working on a project with his son. Well, I'm certainly going to do everything that I can to help my Cub Scouts. Hey, Paul, do you give me an idea? The Scouts can use your help tomorrow. My help? My boy's troop's going on a camporee next week. We're going to go out tomorrow for practice. The man who's supposed to help us can't make it. I wonder if you could. Gosh, I'd like to very much, but I've already promised Timmy and Scott that I'd take them on a field trip tomorrow. In fact, I was just on the way over to ask Scott's parents if he could go. Well, now, bring the boys along. I'm sure they'd get a big kick out of watching our boys practice woodcraft. Well, now, what would I have to do? I don't know much about scouting. All you have to do is hold a stopwatch. See how much time it takes them to tie knots, boil water, and all the other things they have to do for the contest. Well, now, that's a deal. I'm sure I won't have any trouble in talking the boys into coming along. Well, good. Might as well tell them about it now. Where's Mom? Well, she'll be along in a minute, son. She's inside talking to your cub master. Do you fellas know Mr. Westrup and his son, Hank? This is Scott and Timmy. Hi, fellas. Hi, Mr. Westrup. Congratulations. Hi, Hank. I've never seen so many badges before. I've been a scout a long time. I'm senior patrol leader and my dad's scout master. Son, if you don't mind, our plans have been changed a little for tomorrow. We're going, aren't we? Of course we are. Mr. Westrup here has asked me to join him and Hank and the troop, and they've invited you. Oh, boy! Good. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. I forgot my manners there for a minute. These are Scott's cousins, Ralph and Bert, uh, Mr. Westrup, his son, Hank. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi. You fellas going to become Scouts, too? <laughs> Would you like to come with us tomorrow? Be most happy to have you. We don't want to go. Thanks. But I'd like to go. How about you, Scott? You think you can go? I can't go. I gotta stay here with my cousin. Go on, Scott. I don't know. Oh, who cares if you go? I'll ask my mother. If you boys change your mind, remember you're welcome. Thanks. Well, I guess we should talk about what I can bring tomorrow. Not a thing, Paul, unless you want to pick up a couple of boys that live on your way. I sure, it'd be my pleasure. Thanks very much. It's been a wonderful meeting. Hey. 
I want to go. There's nothing else to do around here. Huh. What's the matter with you? We're going on a cookout, all right. But not with them. And how are we going to have a cookout? Just leave it to me. This is one hike those scouts won't forget in a hurry. Discovery Kids will be back. That's our boy. Oh, gosh, he looks great. That's your service, General. Oh, there's something about a uniform. Well, have a good time. Mm -hmm. You too, Timmy. Yes, Mom. You be a good girl, Alfie. Do everything Mom tells you. We have to hurry, son. Got to pick up Scott. I'm real sorry you're not coming, girl. Bye. <laughs> Have a good time. We will. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> well, I better get back to work. Well, me too. about us coming to the forest. He's a sentry. I never knew that. Gee, Hank, I never knew anybody who knows as much as you do about the woods and the farm and animals and everything. A boy scout has to learn things like that, and a good scout wants to. What's that? It's supposed to be a moose. I think this moose has got two legs. Somebody's using a moose collar. You blow it like a horn. Maybe it's a hunter. It's not the hunting season. Someone's trying to kid us. Who? Come on, we better catch up with the others. Timmy, we got a moose go at my house. Do you think it's that one? Maybe. If it is, I think I know who's blowing it. That didn't scare him. Oh, who cares? I got a couple better ideas. What? Never you mind. Come on, we gotta hurry and get ahead of them. Here. Oh, Sam, they'll be coming any next. What do you want me to do? Take it and hide behind those bushes there. I'll hide behind that bush. Let them all walk by till Scott comes. Then we'll trip him and get that pretty uniform all dirty. Now go on, they're coming. Something growled at me. Well, we 
you'd better get out of here. Yeah, I suppose so. Don't worry, we'll get our chance yet. Well, fellas, before the cleanup detail gets started, what say we have a song? Yeah! yeah. Right, you lead them, huh? Keep the campfire burning While our thoughts are turning To the story songs and tells The long day's fun For an ever-greening song You boys know who that is? I think it's my cousin, Mr. Westbrook. That's not a very good place for a fire. Let's say we invite him to join us. Hank, will you? Sure, Dad. Be sure to put out that fire. I'll go with him. Fine. All right, clean up detail. Let's get to work. Fellas, how are you doing? Okay. This isn't a very good place for a fire, you know. Why not? Too many dead leaves around. Why don't you guys come along and join us, huh? Don't want to. I'd like to have you. Sure we would. You were invited yesterday, remember? We're having a good time. Well, now, how about changing your minds? We'd rather stay here. All right. But I think you better put out that fire. We want a fire. We're not going to put it out. Now look, fellas, it's dangerous. If you don't want to put it out, then we'll have to do it for you. Hank, give me a hand, Hillis. Hey, cut that out! No! All right, guys, we don't like it any more than you do. But you have to know how to handle fires. And where to build them. Come on, Bru, let's go home. Sure you want to come with us? No, thanks. You did your good deed for today. You know your way back? Don't worry about us. Yeah, I think that did it. Join the others. Let's take one last look around. No cans, no papers, and the fire out. Let's have a real fire. All right. Yeah. 
help. <laughs> the other. Hank, you take the boys back to the highway. And when you get there, flag down a car. Go to the nearest telephone and call the fire department. Okay, Dad. Come on, gang. Timmy, you and Scott stay close to Hank now. We gotta make sure that Ralph and Bert aren't in there. Well, they should have had plenty of time to get away. Unless they panic. Let's take a look. and check all the items on that list. Mrs. Martin? And now, before we adjourn tonight's meeting, we have a special award for heroism you voted for. Jimmy? Lassie, the scotch of this pack voted to give you this medal to be the hero, to hereby declare you to be the mascot. But a rule is for everyone, Timmy. You know that. I just hope Lassie understands. Well, she's your friend and she trusts you. Don't you, girl? All right, let's do it once more. There's Scott! Why is so lucky? I had to stay home because we got company. These are my cousins from Chicago. Ralph and Bert. This is my best friend. His name is Timmy. Hi. Oh. Ow! You keep her away from us. She won't hurt you. She's protecting Timmy. I'm not afraid of her. I don't like dogs, that's all. My brother's not afraid of anything. You join in the scouts, too? Uh-huh. Big deal. We could have joined if we wanted to. Huh, Ralph? Who wants to? It's for babies. It is not. You have to be eight before you can join. You know how old I am. Tell him, Bert. I'm 10 and he's 12. So what do we want with that kid stuff? It isn't kid stuff. You get to learn a lot of important things. Like, um, building things and taking care of cows, horses, dogs, and not get lost in the woods. We ought to join. How around? Then we could take care of all the cows and horses. We got back in our apartment in Chicago. <laughs> Jimmy, Scott, you've come here tonight seeking admission into the fun and friendship of Cub Scouting. You've learned, together with your parents who are here with you, the things necessary to become a bobcat. Will you give me the Cub Scout sign and repeat the Cub Scout promise? I, Scott Richards. I promise to do my best, to do my duty, to guard my country, to be square and obey the law of the pack. Will the parents of these candidates please step forward and stand beside your sons? Will you 
pin the Bobcat badge on your son, making him an official Cub Scout. There's nothing so satisfying to a man as working on a project with his son. Well, I'm certainly going to do everything that I can to help my Cub Scout. Hey, Paul, you give me an idea. The Scouts can use your help tomorrow. My help? My boy's troop. Cloris Leachman, John Shepard, George Chandler, and John Provost as Timmy. And, of course, Lassie. I, Timothy Martin, promise to do my best, to do my duty, to God and my country. And don't tell me. To God and my country. To be square and obey the law of the past. That's fine. I hope I remember it tonight. Well, don't you worry. I'll help you until you know it perfectly. But what if I forget? Everybody will be watching. The Cub Scout Pack and the Cub Master. Oh, you won't forget. Besides, Scott will be staying at the same time, so that'll help. What if he forgets it, too? Oh, he won't forget. And neither will you. Well, where is he? Why doesn't he get here? Well, we probably had some chores to do. I'll bet he's on his way right now. I wish you could come tonight, girl. Lassie will be waiting for you right outside, Timmy. That is the same as having her inside so she can watch. Timmy, we've been over that. I just don't like to do anything without Lassie. Well, she can't join the Cub Scouts. Then we even let her come to one of the meetings. Timmy, if you were allowed to bring Lassie, then all the boys would want to bring their dog. Can you imagine what the meetings would be like if that happened? But Lassie's different. Yes, she is. At least we think Especially she to his parents. He is courteous in all that he says and does. The youth stands for unity. When a boy joins a pack, his parents join too. He does not. The youth stands for unity. When a boy joins a pack, his parents join too. He does not work alone. But with other boys, he learns to get along with others. The B stands for bravery. The Cub Scout is courageous enough to stand up for the things that he thinks are right. Honesty, equality, and fair play, thereby making the world a better place in which to live. paper, and then you strike the match. And you know what else they teach you? How not to get lost in the woods on State Street. <laughs> Come on, Brie, let's go chase butterflies. Why not? I can't practice, I promise. My mom said I have to entertain them. Okay, but you ought to teach them about the Boy Scouts while you're doing it. Friends? welcome you to our ceremony. As you know, Cub Scouting includes the whole family. We hope as parents that you will assist the boys in every way you can when called upon in various leadership capacities. We will light five candles. Two are blue, two are gold, and the one in the center is white. 
In front of these colored candles are the letters C-U-B-S. These four letters spell cubs. But each letter in itself stands for something special. All right, boys. Courtesy. A Cub Scout is courteous. He is courteous to old people, his friends, his teachers, and especially...